All right. So we are live for this month's Club 1040 Q&A. And as you know, every month we do this. Right off the top, I have a big announcement. And it's an important one if these have been something that you look forward to every month. And that is that we have a day change. It's been the first Wednesday of the month for the last couple of years and number of years, actually. And um, as of this month, it's our second Thursday in a row because we have an unavoidable conflict on Wednesdays from now on at the same time. And so we are moving our monthly this broadcast, this monthly broadcast to live Q&A to Thursdays, the first Thursday of the month. And we try to do it at 7 a.m. And, you know, sometimes there's some technical difficulties and things and just schedules. Uh, you know, sometimes aircraft and airplanes don't always agree with what we're, with our Facebook live schedule. So anyway, um, I've got, we've got incredible, incredible broadcast for you. Um, and if you are in any way a partner of Club 10 Ford, you're going to want to watch this to the end. It's going to be fun and funny. I believe you'll, you'll have some laughs as you hear some of the stories behind the stories. Um, in this episode, we have uh, an update. You know, what we do is we like to look at this past month. We have an update on the Austria Mission Conference. We um, talk a little bit about what's happening in Lebanon. Um, just touch on, in a very careful way, a recent visit to a um, security-sensitive country for a prayer visit. And then our majority of our time will be uh, regarding... Um, a unreached people group or even in a UUPG. We'll talk about what that means in a little bit. And uh, with that, we'll be talking to Jeff Kaysen, longtime friend of Club 1040 and team member. So there's uh, some prayer points as we finish and then Q&A. Remember, this is a time for you to ask questions. And we do have some of the team that's there watching the Facebook live stream. If you have a question, just pop a question in the chat and we'll do our very best to um, answer those questions by the end of our time. We have some questions that people have put in, sent in ahead of time as well. Um, so Club 1040, what is Club 1040? Club 1040 is more than a name, it's a vision. Club, it's a group of like-minded people who come together around a common purpose and mission. And that common purpose and mission is that 10th parallel, the 40th parallel, the 1040 window. We like to say, what is a window for? Not only is it for seeing auto, but it's for letting light into a dark place. And so that's why we like to call it that window. It's not a hard phrase. It's a common mission phrase, the 1040 window. And we um, at Club 1040 really um, uh, are your tool, your, your means whereby you can reach right into that window and you can bring the light into those places that don't have light. It's a place where there's the least amount of light. So um, um, by the uh, by the year 2030, one of the, the objectives that we have is to see um, leaders trained through Bible colleges and then church planning movements sparked across 22 countries across the Middle East and North Africa. You'll hear the acronym MENA often with Club 1040, meaning Mid Middle East, MENA, and NA for North Africa, Middle East, North Africa. So, um, hey, by the way, if you're not on our email list, make sure that you send us our, your email address because our email will be coming out in the next few days. And you're gonna wanna see kind of some of the follow-up and information stay up to date with all of that. And that's really what this is all about. It's trying to keep you as informed as possible for your prayers and your partnership so that you know what you're, uh, you're achieving, what you're accomplishing through Club 1040. And uh, in the meantime, you know, this is once a month, but in the meantime, social media, following on social media, the team is doing an amazing job with that. And uh, it's one of the best ways to stay up to date with everything. So um, <clears throat> going to March and update this last month, what happened? Well, we had the incredible honor and privilege to be a part of the Let's Go Mission Conference in Austria, hosted by Fred, Pastors Fred and Judy Lambert, and uh, their amazing church, an amazing team. It is an interdenominational, cross-denominational mission conference that had like 30 mission organizations that were representative. Every, you know, the, all the mainstream ones like OM and others. And then we had the privilege of being one of the main speakers for that event. In fact, there were something like um, 
I guess I'd say somewhere around 70 people that were um, considered kind of the mission or mission partners. People would come from all over the world to be a part of that. In addition to the venue was completely packed and it was packed online as well. Um, it was a great time together. Uh, so like um, as an example, um, we were, uh, they do like a, a brunch for all the, all the missionaries and the teams that came back. And there were like, like I said, like 70 people or so that were a part of that. And uh, then that, that picture there shows you, uh, you know, Julie doing the selfie with all the people there. I had the privilege to be able to speak into the lives of all those. So when I say we, I mean Club 1040, that means you. You had the, the you know, you, we were the vehicle and you were the ones that were able to be a blessing to these leaders. We talked to them about um, the importance of uh, finishing strong and believing that they can finish and complete the task, that it is a possibility. And the right picture there is a podcast picture where um, Julie and I was uh, were privileged to be able to share uh, quite a bit uh, along the lines of Club 1040. That, that podcast goes globally, of course, but especially all throughout Europe. Um, yeah. And then Julie, she, as she always does, inspired, you know, Club 1040 does three things. We train, we mobilize, we inspire. And that's like, that's a part of what Club 1040 was doing is inspiring the church that we can fulfill the Great Commission in this generation. And a part of that is this generation, every nation, um, inspiring the children. And she brought, um, you know, uh, the costumes that she brings from all the different nations, the traditional dress costumes and all the flags. And they had the parade of flags there. And she ministered to the children. Not only did she minister to the children, about mission and i always i love that i mean they get the the children praying for the world and just some of the most powerful prayers are prayed but one of the one of the um afterwards one of those cool testimonies is there was a um uh the past one of the pastoral team leadership team at the church said you know there was a young guy that was he's he's a pretty energetic kid and he's you know to their surprise and amazement when they had their dinner together after having that um you know, big um, kids rally, then um, he's like, hey, we need to pray for all the missionaries before we pray for our dinner. We need to pray for those that don't know Jesus. And he's like um, talking about how he wants to be a missionary. So that's what you do at Club 1040. That's what you do through your partnership. You enabled us to be able to go and do that, inspiring those children who then who knows what that that young young boy will do? That energy is there for a reason, <laughs> and it might be to go to places that haven't re been reached before. Um, she also uh, talked about um, to the adults about how to raise um, global leaders in this next generation, and from a mission perspective, and how to use missions in that. She did a sessions on that. I was had the privilege to do the final session uh, for the Friday night, the big conference, and in that session. Um, I guess it was a Saturday night. And uh, uh, so I, I gave a very clear, like, who's willing to go no matter, even at the cost of their own life kind of call to action. And I mean, it was like hundreds of people stood up. And so, so much that I was like, we can't have, because the, the leadership wanted us to pray for them, the, the people that responded. I'm like thinking to myself as I'm up there, how in the world are we going to do this? We can't, we can't bring everybody up. It's pretty much everybody. And so I said, you know, like everybody that's sort of kind of 30 years or younger that has responded, we'll pray for you guys first, come on up. And I mean, it was like 200 young people. I mean, young people, you know, young adults uh, came forward and the, the call was very clear. It was like, look, if you're willing to go, um, anywhere you're, you're saying by coming forward you're saying i'm willing to go anywhere he wants me to go i'm i'm making a pledge that if god wills i will be a, a, a cross-cultural foreign missionary to go anywhere he wants me to go and do anything he wants me to do and that's the kind of response it was it was so powerful to see that we prayed for all those people the leadership team did and um we already had heard some pretty amazing testimonies then on the sunday there were two services in the church there and the cool thing about what they do is, is they receive offerings throughout that time. And last year they raised like 70,000 euros, I think. I'm not sure exactly what it was this year. They raised as much money as they can and they divided amongst all those mission organizations that came and had their 
booths and stands. And there were t there were mission organizations that were about mobilizing on short term trips, and they you know promoted that, and then people could go and sign up for short term trips. It's an incredible mission conference, one of the best I've been to, and it was such a privilege to be be there. I'm I'm trying to get Pastor Fred to connect with us. Maybe next uh, month we might be able to hear from him personally, kind of the backstory on that. So that was then right from there. Um, uh, we were in Vienna at the airport and the night before we were to depart to a, a, a security sensitive country and um, we looked and our flights had been canceled. And so um, Julie, the master that she is at travel logistics, she she in, you know, quickly. In fact, actually, we were pretty tired. She went over to the airport, got it all figured out, got us a flight. And uh, so we were able to make it to where we were going the next day. And there were um, 20 other people besides us that joined together for a time of praying out the plan of God for that country. And we were able to go to, um, well, we did have a little challenge getting into the country, <laughs> the border control. They did, they, you know, they're looking at all the different places we go and they're you know, like, okay, who are you again? What do you do again? And uh, we had to sit in the, in the red chairs for a while <laughs> until an immigration officer came out and interrogated us a little bit, but, um, but we were let in and, uh, and we, we really feel like we prayed out the assignments that we were needed to pray out and we met the people we were needed to meet with and uh, some, some key relationships and, and a big part of what we do whenever we go to new locations, we spend time on the ground, praying, fact, finding connections, building relationships, looking for that men and women of peace, praying out the strategy. You know, it's in prayer that we see things. And when we see things, then we can walk in those things that we've seen. We see what the Lord has for us to do. So, um, yeah, that uh, there are two, two, you know, from a prayer perspective for you, there's two other um, visits that will happen, one in the month of May, one in June. So be uh, mindful of that as uh, as we look to really now that in, in this kind of like, I guess a good example, a good point to say this is um, is things are operating really, really well in, in Lebanon. The, the team is doing a fabulous job. So right after that, in that country that we went to, um, we then traveled back to Lebanon where we are right now. And uh, we're able to teach in the Bible college. And Jeff Casey was here for that. He and I shared a class on the subject of, of, of divine love. And it was a powerful time. In addition to us being um, sharing that class and teaching that class, um, we had uh, three of our team members from um, Egypt come and spend a, a number of days uh, with us. They were able to see some of the behind the scenes of how we do the sessions, the, the Bible college sessions, and then um, and then actually participate in a Bible college session. And then we had a debrief afterwards. So the teams between Lebanon and Egypt are really synergizing and, and developing so, a lot of strength. Um, and so uh, we, uh, I don't know, any questions? Oh, Brandon Hertug says that we should get some red chairs to practice timeout interrogations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had lots of practice. We're good. <laughs> so um, uh, scholarship-wise, the scholarships keep coming in, and we're so grateful. We're almost to 60 out of 84 that we need. So praise God for that. As, um, and, uh, and I think I just heard another church saying that they wanted to connect on that level too. So amazing things happening. In addition to um, all of that, um, parallel to that, Jeff Kaysen was, he had been in Egypt and then he was in another country. I'm going to be a little bit careful about how we talk about some of these things. We'll show a couple screenshots so you can kind of read a little bit about it. We'll try not to mention the words too much. Honestly, it's probably not a big deal if we do, but with AI and algorithms and things like that these days, it's just smart to not say certain words that can be picked up. Um, but this is, of course, Jeff and his wife, Nina. And uh, it, by the way, they are um, uh, underneath the Clifton 40 mission portal. So if you go underneath give and then you go to give to a missionary, you can find their place there or just simply text the word case into 71777 and you can connect with them. And and uh, um, so uh, we'll bring him on here into the into the call and uh, introduce him properly. And um, he's in Ohio right now. So, uh, Jeff.
Welcome to our Great. monthly Club 1040 Facebook Live. And uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself. And I know you got a family business that you do there. Tell us about, about the business and, and your family. And you got kind of a cool live off grid setup going to tell us about that. Yeah, so we uh, live off grid in Southern Ohio, um, not connected to any power source. So uh, use uh, solar panels and batteries and that provides our power. And then we, we run a soap business as well um, um, called Off Grid Soap Company. And basically Nina runs most of all that, all of her recipes and stuff like that. But really uh, in the middle of all that, uh, missions is our main focus in our heart and um we've just been uh really excited by all that god has been putting before us here recently so very good stuff awesome so uh if you if the team will pull up that image of the shabak people and uh, you know i'm not going to mention the name much more often but this is a group of people in the country that it shows there in north the northern that northern part of that country and jeff you were just there a few um days ago really um tell us a little bit about about your you know why you were there so yeah this group of people which is considered a uupg uh unreached unengaged uh people group um live in the northern part of the country uh they number over uh 200 people and there is no known work among them uh, that we've been able to find. And so um, I was just, yeah, last week I, I just got back. Um, I spent a little bit of time there doing some fact finding and just working with uh, what relationships that we have there. And uh, it was just an incredibly uh, fruitful trip. Yeah, and um, tell me like, Practically speaking, what does fact finding look like? I know it has to do with a lot of coffee, tea. <laughs> <laughs> Very little sleep and, and meet and visit with people as long as it takes. And if that's all night, that's okay too. But uh, so, yeah, it's, um, you know, I knew one, one person there who's been a longstanding uh, uh, individual or family in that region for a very long time. The only person that I knew in that place, and I knew that they were, you know, fairly close uh, to where this people group's at. And uh, so that was sort of my port of call was to meet with them, honor them and spend time with them. Um, and really through that, then um, uh, telling them a little bit of what was on our heart uh, with this people group. Um, lo and behold, it so happened that. Um, they, in fact, knew a person uh, just recently in the last month has started um, living among that people group and, and, and working to build some relationships uh, right now with about six uh, family members and a village elder. So that that was just uh, absolutely incredible. It is. It's amazing the timing of all this. So amazing. You know, we've had this uh, this the genesis of us. Clifton 40 adopting this, this UUPG. And, and by UUPG, as Jeff said, it means unengaged, unreached people group, meaning there's no known Bible, no known believers amongst them, no known church, and you know, no mission work or anything like that. And so it was must be five years ago, it was definitely before COVID. Ronnie Elliott and I were in um, what's called finishing the task. It's a gathering of all the mission or major mission organizations in the world. At, uh, happened to be at Saddleback Church, Rick Warren's church in California for like three days. And the aim was to, 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 um, to get all of the UUPGs that they had a list of. At the time, the week st started with like a thousand. By the end of it, pretty much everything was adopted. And by adopting it meant that um, with the goal would be within a couple years to have a um, near culture um, believer living and ministering among that group with the intent of um, reaching them, discipling them with the hope of starting even a church, even if it's like a house church or home church. And 
So we've had that project since that time. We made that commitment in our hearts, put that on the website at maybe a year or two later, began talking about it, did some fact finding early on. Ronnie did some of that, some visits to that area. And there wasn't a lot of information back then. Jeff is really well read and you've done huge amounts of study and research and you found there's a lot more information now than maybe there was five, even five years ago. Um, and but the timing of it was crazy because first Jeff said, like, you know, yeah, I mean, even if we had all the money come in for the project, the main issue would have been the, the person to lead the project. It's not just anybody that can lead a project like this. And, you know, not just anybody that can go into a place and go days without sleep, drinking coffee, meeting people that they never met before, finding facts, and then, um, you know, uh, prayerfully obtaining the strategy that the Lord has for, you know, the, the people or persons, plural, that are supposed to be mobilized into that group. And um, so, but Jeff, um, he he uh, kind of re-engaged in the, in the Clifton 40 team um, in, a, in a really vital way. And I was like, um, at the same time he did that, someone that we don't even really know um, saw the project on the website and gave the money to support. There had there'd been over the period of five years, maybe like $3,000 out of the 36,000 that we were looking for. And out of five, five years and one person finished that project off with like $33,000. And at the same time, Jeff comes on board and he was able to make that visit. And then he finds somebody locally through our, our relationships that just in the last month has begun to engage this people group, not like intentionally, it just happened relationally. And what a cool thing that is, the timing of it. So there's God's hands on this. I want you to meet Jeff so you could pray into it and know that it's happening. We're not going to be able to say a ton about it because of the, you know, the security ramifications potentially of that. But we want you to know these are the kind of things that we do, Club 1040 does, that we can't always talk about and wanted to share this progress with you. Um, you know, Jeff, uh, we've known you for 30 years. <laughs> it was like, uh, Julie and I, I, I graduated, uh, we got married in 1992. I graduated on Friday. We got married on the following Monday, May 1992, May 18th is when we got married. And um, by um, uh, sort of uh, October 94, we started itinerating. And the very first church I went to was in Urbana, Ohio, at the church you were attending. You just started attending it. So I want you, for uh, the sake of your story, so beautiful of what God did in your life. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what life was like before you connected with that church. And then just just uh, um, kind of update us a little bit about that first meeting. <clears throat> OK, yeah. So um, I came out of a uh, pretty, pretty rough uh, drug background. Uh, at one point at 17 years old, I was uh, facing um, 15 to 25 years in prison for uh traffic and uh, illegal substances <laughs> and uh you know just came from all that background and um got radically saved um uh in a bathroom uh at the age of 20 years old uh, that forever changed my life and um but then fast forward i'm like i knew i was called to missions from the day i got saved and in that bathroom but i didn't know how in the world do, how do you do this? And, you know, and the church uh, that I was attending, um, you know, they were encouraging me, you know, you, you ought to think about getting trained, go to Bible school. And I thought, man, we ain't got time for that. We've got to go get people saved like now. And, and I didn't want any part of that whatsoever. I wanted to, to like hit the road and go. And so I was at work and the church secretary, um, bless her heart. She was such a lovely lady. And, and I was at work and she called and she said, Jeff, I don't know what time you get off work, but you need to get your, uh, bottom, <laughs> uh, immediately up to the church. And there's a missionary going to be here and you need to meet him. 
and I said, well, okay, sounds great. And so I uh, finished work and come up to the church and, and lo and behold, uh, uh, Matt Beamer sat in there and we sat down and start talking and, you know, you, Matt, you're telling me, you know, things that's on your heart, and where you're going and what's next. And, and I, and I, this is just how literal I was. I was like, well, man, this sounds great. I was, I literally was like, I'll go home, I'll get my backpack and uh, I'll throw my backpack on and, and sort of, dude, we're going to hit the road. And, uh, and you basically then, you know, was like, well, hey, you ought to think about uh, going and, and getting trained. I, you know, I just recently found out uh, about uh, Rama Bible Training College. And I mean, I was like, are you serious? You know, not another, are you, you know, I have to go do this to go work for the Lord. But it was wisdom. And, uh, and you said, listen, if you go and do this, hey, you've got an open door. We would love for you to come and help. And a very long story short, I went to Raymond Bible Training College, did the two years uh, between my first and second year. Uh, spent the summer with uh, Matt and Julie, and uh, and Jonathan was just born in Liverpool, and um, came back, finished my second year, and about six or seven months after that, moved to Manchester, England, and um, helped you guys with just whatever you needed help with. Uh, the first week I was there, I met Nina, uh, who just a year after that became my wife, and We've been married 25 years this year, uh, three kids. First one just graduated um, high school this year. And so, yeah, very exciting stuff. So we're extremely uh, thankful for Club 1040. And we are anticipating great things in the, in the near future as far as uh, the future of uh, reaching people for Jesus. Yeah, I'm so so thankful. Jeff and Nina were like our right hand, you know, our right hand sort of team members for the pioneering you know, of the church in Manchester. It's now Go Church that just celebrated like 27. Actually, April 13th is this April 13th is the 28th year. I think it's a even. No, we started in, in 97. 97 so 20 finishing 27 starting 28 years Isn't that nuts <laughs> that's crazy and uh, I feel good <laughs> in fact we're going to be there uh, one of our prayer points is we're going to be there um, in a couple weeks uh, for our annual spring summit leader leadership summit uh, with the, the go church family of churches coming together and other other church leaders coming together so that'll be fun be praying into that um, and then get to minister in that church. But uh, uh, Jeff and Nina were also like aunt and uncle to the kids, you know, having their children away from home. Um, Jeff, you got to tell, I got to tell you, tell this story though. Your, your, your path to Ramo to the Bible college wasn't exactly straight. <laughs> so you, you had applied, you had applied, you know, you said, yeah, okay, I'll go. You applied and they denied you first, right? I think That's, they looked yes. at the record. <laughs> yes, that's correct. And then I thought, and, 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 you know, and to the pastor's credit, you know, he, he said, well, you know, just because I hadn't been in that church very long. And so he said, you know, why don't you just take the next year? You can work your job, save money, um, you know, help here at the church. And, you know, and just the frame of mind, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go now. And I, I just thought I, that I can't wait a year. And so, you know, I you know, read in the script, scriptures, you know, walk by faith and not by sight. And that just rang through my being. Now, considering I didn't know uh, Brother Hagen, I didn't know anything about faith. I didn't know anything. I'd never even heard any messages along that line other than, you know, perhaps what the pastor shared. And so I packed up my backpack and I, I, I took off and walked. He started walking. <laughs> by started faith. walking. I mean, I hitchhiked. I rode with truck drivers, and you know, families picked me up along the way. But a lot, you know, just within a couple of days uh, in in route, 
you know, I was reading in the Bible about Jesus went up into the mountains to pray. And the only mountains I knew of was the Rocky Mountains. And so I thought, well, I know school don't start till September. I'm going to go to the Rocky Mountains with my tent. And that's what I did. Set my tent up in the Rocky Mountains. Spent most of my time praying, reading the Bible. And I ran out of money, so I had to get a job. Got a little job down in Boulder, Colorado, and then would hitchhike back and forth to work every day. And um, Be lo before, you go, before you go on, this this is I always love this. <laughs> you used to say this every once in a while. You would end up with a story like this, whether it was in England or before. You <laughs> like while you were in the middle of you know in the in the nighttime with a campfire up there in the mountains in Colorado by yourself. <laughs> Some guy comes out of the woods and your 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 response to something like that was always, are you gonna mug me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I ran into some guy who uh uh he had a trunk full of dynamite in the trunk of his car and uh talking about blowing the whole side of the mountain of uh, which I thought sounded pretty fun, but um I definitely didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't know his main motives on that, but <laughs> yeah, I've met some characters along the way. <laughs> we'll leave that undisclosed. <laughs> so you, uh, you called back home, just let your mom know you're okay and you're still alive and all that. And she's like, where are you at? Yes. And th this is getting into a, about August and I took off early summer and you know, I said, I'm in, in the mountains of Colorado. And she said, well, did you apply to that school again? And I said, no. Um, she said, well, you better get there because um, for some reason you've got an acceptance letter and you are approved to be there at the start of uh, the new school year in September. And so I packed everything up, went in and put my uh, notice in at, at the job and um, got my last little check. And got out on the freeway and two, uh, two deadheads, two hippie girls picked me up in a Volkswagen van just outside of Boulder and drove me all the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma for $13. <laughs> and, uh, and then you got a taxi from Tulsa to Broken Arrow and it cost you 20 bucks, right? <laughs> 25 bucks to go from Tulsa to Broken Arrow. Little, little dive of a hotel in Broken Arrow. I don't even know if it's still there. Checked in there. I mean, I had virtually no money at all. And pizza, ordered a pizza. And the delivery guy uh, brought my pizza and got talking to him. And he said, well, I've got a room I'll rent you. And like $90 a month. And so I said, I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, had no suit. Of course, you had to wear a suit and tie then. And. Um, dress re requirements and um, went to a thrift store, paid about two or three dollars, got a suit, a uh, terrible looking tie and size 11 shoes, which is about a size and a half too big and stuffed paper towels in them and and had no money to go to school. And I just stood in line every day. And lo and behold, um, it all worked out. Yeah. God is so faithful. What a fun story. And uh, and I also know you also, you know, for because of previous interactions with the law, you, you couldn't drive either. So all year long, you were going back and forth to school and work and all these different places, riding a bike and a backpack. And yes. you yeah, pushed whole, it through, man, all that weather. All, all the whole two years, I'd lost my license for, uh, I was on a 10 year suspension. Uh, from getting in a lot of trouble. And uh, yeah, my first itinerating things, once I finished Raymond, got back home. I mean, thank, thank, thank the Lord. But, you know, I had a, I had a meeting with a church in Pennsylvania, but I had no way there. And the pastor actually drove me to Pennsylvania for that appointment. I mean, I'm so grateful. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, so that's how I, I didn't, I, you know, so I'm trying to itinerate and I, I can't drive. So I'm like trying to hitch rides to meet pastors. And I mean, it just sounds terrible when you say it out loud, but you know, my heart was in the right place. <laughs> yeah. But I made it. <laughs> you, you made it. You got a beautiful family and 
they love the Lord. And, uh, you guys, you, you guys are great parents. You've raised your kids really, really well. And I love the fact that you're, um, you've always been an important part of Clifton 40, part of the team, part of our lives, but, uh, yeah, even more engaged than ever before. And I'm looking forward to the future. You were in Egypt teaching the Bible college. You helped teach here. Tell a little bit about, you know, what you've seen in Egypt and here and in the different places you've been in your recent travels. Um, you know, like what's your impression of the opportunities for uh, the future? Well, I just think it's wonderful. Uh, the, the thing at both uh, locations uh, is um, the students are are very hungry. I mean, if you're used to teaching in front of people, um, you know when a, when a group of people is pulling on you or if they're not pulling on you, like the, you know, the gift that's inside of you. And in and, and both locations, the students are hungry. Um, they're eager. They're enthusiastic. They're excited. And I, I just think looking to the future as these uh, students begin to graduate, I mean, the things they're going to do, uh, the things we can help them do, uh, the way we'll be able to, you know, ones that want to work alongside of us or ones that, you know, we can help mobilize into areas that, you know, that we would never be able to necessarily go is um, it's so exciting. I mean, it's, it's such a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, it just, uh, I'm ex so excited for the future and what, what, not about what I'm going to do, but w what we can do to get behind these students and see them flourish in, in what God's called them to do is, is thoroughly exciting for me. Absolutely. You know, what's exciting is this weekend they have, um, they have, uh, one, I guess, instructor named Brian Sally and he's um, his ministry is so winning simplified and they're doing the personal evangelism course mm. and they're going to actually get out in the streets this is in Lebanon get out in the streets as a part of that course after being you know going through some training and stuff and they're going to actually apply the classroom theory that they've learned about so you know that's pretty cool 80 students yeah. getting out you know going out into into uh, the downtown area to minister one-on-one -on -one evangelism. Um, you know, as we finish up, uh, some prayer points, uh, you, I, there's a couple questions came in about you and your story and you, we've, we've answered those. Um, here's a question. Uh, what, what do you mean by security sensitive country? Security sensitive country is, it's a language. It's just kind of a phrase we use when we can't talk, what it's, the, we'll speak about the name of the country because of the dynamics of, um, it's access, you know, how accessible it is to the gospel, meaning it's resistant to the gospel. And, and uh, sometimes it's just in the talking about things in today's world, there are countries like, for example, India is a place where a lot of people would send teams in years gone by, and then they would um, come back to their home church and they would have testimony services. And now with the online broadcasts of these services, um, the, the government of India has used those particular online service broadcasts of church service testimony services from short term trips to as the reasons why they blacklist people and, um, you know, uh, basically expelled some of the major mission organizations, even ones that are not really even that evangelical have been expelled. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, as we as we expand, that's kind of where we're at now that Lebanon is more established. I, I kind of almost talked about that, but then I, I didn't get into it that much. We are over the next couple of years starting to, you know, we've been building relationships and things, but now we're looking to expand more throughout these 22 countries. And uh, you'll be hearing more about that, but we can't talk all that much about it. This project on the project is curious itself. Yeah. And oh, that's a good point um, is one of our projects is security sensitive countries. And that project is because we can't talk about certain countries, we can't promote certain pro projects for certain countries um, that allows us the resources to be able to do some of these um, fact finding prayer type trips and things like that until at some point, hopefully we can create a project where we can frame it in a way where it's public. Any question?
Uh, what is the situation here in Ukraine? Good question. I was going to mention that with one of the prayer points is, you know, what's the situation? Obviously, with uh, the recent, um, again, I can't talk too much about it, but but um, uh, just from the fact that it might flag the the Facebook Live here with using certain words. But um, because of the recent uh, things that have happened in the country next to us, you know, Damascus is only like 60 miles from where we live right now. So that thing that happened in Damascus two days ago is only like 60 miles from here. And um, and we do on a regular basis hear and see drones flying over and occasionally you hear the jets. Um, we're fine. The team's fine. Things are escalating. And there is there is a, a, a growing likelihood that uh, something might happen at the southern border here in the sense of it moves from the, um, you know, what happens right now is, is that uh, people fire um, from here, the organization that's here, they shoot like 30 to 50 missiles into the country south of us. Um, but they're kind of careful not to really do a lot of harm to people's lives. And they try to do more destruction to uh, infrastructure and especially infrastructure that would cause them challenges. Um, occasionally people do lose their lives and it's unfortunate. Un um, but the country South, their ethos is, is more and more to the place where they cannot allow that situation to continue. The status quo is not going to be able to stay. So <clears throat> it's interesting to hear different things. I mean, uh, again, it's hard to talk about this without using certain words. Um, the country that's behind a lot of this, a lot of the things happening in this region um, that is malicious to the country, to the South and to the US, that country is actually trying to get the group in Gaza that, you know, the war's about right now to, um, to, to actually consider concessions in a ceasefire is the word that's kind of coming through, which you wouldn't think that would be the case, especially in re after two days ago and what happened in Damascus. But anyway, it is something to be praying about. Um, here we're fine. The good news is, is the country to the South has very accurate, <laughs> So know your neighbors <laughs> and make sure you know your neighbors. Yeah. Julie says, plead the blood. But yeah, plead the blood and know your neighbors. <laughs> um, so, yes, from prayer points as we finish, um, Bible College this weekend, outreach, be praying for them as they go out on the streets and minister to people that have opportunities that they'll connect with the people that are the closest to eternity. Pray for... Um, uh, Go Church Beirut is having its third anniversary this April. It was launched three years ago. It's crazy to think about that third anniversary. And I guess Go Church Manchester, I forget that those are aligned on the April. It's April 13th. Remember that when we pioneered the church? We started with 17 people, April 13th in Manchester, 1997. The next Sunday we had, I don't know what it was. It was less. <laughs> it was like 13 or 12 or something. <laughs> but now that church is doing great. In fact, the, the, the reports are excellent. They're growing by families all the time. Um, but yeah, we'll be there in Manchester in a couple of weeks. They celebrate, I think it's the 27th or 28th birthday of the church. Um, oh, here's one. So uh, this is an answer to prayer is uh, the venue here where we use for the church and the um, Bible college is a municipality a, a, a owned by the city. And um, we've had favor there. We use that building um, a couple times a month. And we you're only you were only able to book it in the month that you use it. So you, you never knew it could be used by somebody else and we wouldn't have the weekends. However, they have just changed things so that we can book it all the way through to the end of the year. And we've done that all except for uh, my session on the Great Commission, which happens in two weeks, we'll be teaching here on the Great Commission. I love doing that class with the students. It just completely changes their lives. And but uh, so we were looking for a venue for that. 
because we couldn't find a venue in the other place. That's a big challenge in this in this in the city is a venue where we can hold that number of students that's conducive to the training. But um, Rafi, one of the team members, has organized the political party's headquarters in the Armenian section for us to be able to use a beautiful facility. So we're using one of the political party's headquarters to do the Bible college session in for that particular weekend. And then we'll go back to our normal venue. But all of that's to say is we're believing for a new headquarters for the ministry. We'd outgrown the previous one. We The leases were up as of just this month, April 1st. We just moved out of it. And so um, we're looking for a new venue, have been looking for the last three years for a new commercial type space. And so be praying. That's a huge prayer point. Oh, well, thank you so much, everyone. Jeff, you're such a blessing. I love you guys. Love to the family. And uh, um, we're excited for the future for sure. Uh, and uh, enjoy, enjoy your time off grid. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Love you guys. Uh, appreciate it. Been a lot of fun. Enjoy it. Yeah, it's good. And uh, so if you want to know anything more about Clifton 40, you can always, you don't have to wait, you know, until next month. Just always send us a, a question through social media, whatever. Follow us on socials, all those things. And uh, uh, also, yeah, thanks for that team. Uh, the team is put, putting up there. If you want to get behind uh, Jeff and Nina in the mission efforts and help them, help support them as they go and and do the, help us do this, Club 1040, do this project, you can connect with them by texting the word CASEN to the number 7177, and that will pull up their uh, donation portal. And thanks to everybody uh, who connected. There's loads of people connecting. And thanks to uh, Christy, who uh, um, has helped us behind the scenes today, and Julie, who's helped us behind the scenes today. All right. Well, God bless you. Blessings, everybody. Share this with someone that needs to hear it so that we can connect with more people and we can build this group of people. The one thing I was going to say about Jeff, you know, 30 some years um, at Clubton 40 is a relational missionary movement reaching the reach. Relationships get the job done for the Lord. God uses relationships to do what he wants to do in the earth. Jeff just mentioned about someone he's known for a long time, a long time relationship. I actually you knew the people that are there in that country before I did. You're the one that mentioned them to me first. And so um, that relationship he's known for years is helped to materialize um, that uh, new relationship with someone that's already making contact with that UUPG. And it's relationship, relationship, relationship. Yes. All right. Well, God bless you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.